There are many scriptural proofs that showcase the fact that today we are living in what the Bible calls the last days. But in this video, we will count down the top seven most undeniable scriptural proofs that the time of tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, is about to begin. Some of these scriptural proofs you may have heard of before, and they may be familiar to you, but others are less well known and I believe are easily proven relevant. So the top seven scriptural proofs that we are living in the end times. Number seven, the age of scoffers. Second Peter three, verse three, knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Today, it's increasingly unpopular to uphold the Bible as truth. Even in many Protestant churches today, Bible stories are held up as works of fiction in order to convey to the reader a broader point. Most Christian universities today teach evolution as fact and the biblical six-day creation as just fanciful writing. This verse in 2 Peter chapter 3 even lays out what some of the scoffing is all about, a biblical worldwide flood, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, 2 Peter 3 verse 6. Today, this is one of the most scoffed at notions in religious and secular universities, that a worldwide flood actually took place and wiped out almost all of humanity. Yet the verses clearly state that scoffers will come and focus on the flood in the last days. Number six, perilous times. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, and then in verse 4, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Can anyone with an accurate view of history identify a more evident time where people openly sinned in public without a care about who knew or who was watching? University students walking around displaying sexual replicas of male anatomy are openly admitting the sins of the Bible and being allowed to maintain a status of authority? Or how about a legal system that allows the open murder of human beings and a government that pays for it all? The whole world, all of it, has forgotten what sin is and is no longer shamed by it. We've come to hate good and love evil. We hate life and we love death. As Paul wrote, these indeed are the perilous times of the last days. Number five moving at light speed. Daniel chapter 12, verse four. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. The time of the end, it says. Many shall run to and fro. Today, you know, you can board a plane in New York City and in less than 24 hours be in some of the most remote parts of China. This was unheard of just a hundred years ago. When you look out of an airplane at the clouds below, do you realize that you're seeing something that 99.999% of all of humanity that has ever lived on planet Earth has never seen before? Today, people make trips across the country every holiday season, trips that even 100 years ago would have been only one way for most people. People today are truly running to and fro. And knowledge shall be increased, it says. It's impossible today to actually calculate how much information is on the internet. Knowledge has grown beyond the ability to actually measure it, literally. Today, you can go on YouTube and learn how to be a mechanic, or how to fly a plane, or grow onions, or install solar panels. You can literally learn any aspect of world history, biology, mathematics, engineering, and all from multiple points of view. Knowledge has increased at the time of the end. Number four the fullness of the Gentiles. Romans 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you would be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Many Christians might be familiar with this verse, but many fail to understand that Paul is referencing the prophecy given by Jacob to his grandson Ephraim back in Genesis and a verse in Daniel. And Joseph said unto his father, not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. And he also shall be a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. Jacob told Joseph that his son Ephraim would be great amongst the nations. The Gentiles, not great as in powerful, but great as in numbers. And remember the verse we just read in Daniel chapter 12? Well, if you keep reading, you get to verse seven. 
And when he shall have accomplished the scatter, the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. This verse also is directly connected to the prophecy given by Jacob and spoken of by Paul in Romans chapter 11. We, you and I, happen to live in a place in history where all of the earth has been explored and its people groups have been made known to each other. With the exception of a tribe or two of people located deep in the Amazon, all of humanity has been discovered and explored over the entire planet. What does this mean? It means that humanity has encompassed the earth as a whole. We're everywhere. The seed of Jacob has become a multitude of nations, and the fullness of the Gentiles is ready to come in. Number 3. The Enviropig and Chimeras Isaiah 66, verse 17 For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one in the midst, eating swine's flesh, the abomination, and the mouse, shall be consumed together, says the Lord. Now, most Bible scholars will agree that this last chapter of Isaiah is about the final judgment of God and the millennial thousand-year reign of the coming Messiah. And that when he comes, people will be eating swine's flesh, the abomination, and the mouse together. Just a few years ago, a university in Canada successfully created what they called the Enviropig, a pig that grew faster and produced less methane gas, making it cleaner for the environment. They achieved this feat by combining the pig with DNA from a mouse and E. coli bacteria. E. coli bacteria comes from fecal matter in the intestines. Let's read it again. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They, eating swine's flesh, the abomination, the mouse, shall be consumed together. Because of a public outcry on the project, both the FDA and Health Canada shelved the requested approval and the Canadian University stored the genetic DNA of the project until a later date. But universities and other agencies have since taken the data from the project and used it to further develop and alter pig DNA with mice DNA along with the DNA of E. coli bacteria. The technological marvel of mixing pig with mice DNA and the DNA of E. coli bacteria is something you could only see in these last days. Number 2. The Rosetta Stone Age Genesis 11, verse 6 through 7 And the Lord said, Behold, the people are one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Let's think about this. All of humanity has been divided by speech since Genesis. God specifically says that this language division is to keep man from doing whatever they can imagine to do. Today, you have devices such as the pilot and computer programs to overcome most language obstacles. Even Google has translation ability built into its search engine that translates in real time. It's safe to say that the barrier God placed upon humanity back in Genesis has been removed, or soon will be. Today you have genetic experiments and government projects like CERN that involve dozens of countries and their top scientists. There are no language barriers in these projects anymore. The last time humanity had the ability to communicate without obstruction, the creator of heaven and earth decided to step in. With the removal of language barriers so close to becoming a reality, the involvement once again by our Heavenly Father must be close at hand. Number 1. The Return of Obedience Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 30 and chapter 30, verse 1 through 3. It was prophesied by Jacob, Moses, and the prophets that those of Israel would be conquered and scattered thin among the nations of the Gentiles. They were conquered because of their disobedience at hearing and doing the commandments, statutes, and judgments of God. But one day, they would again turn their hearts to God and begin to be obedient. Consider these verses from Deuteronomy chapter 4. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and you shall be left few in number among the heathen where the Lord shall lead you. But if from thence you seek the Lord thy God, you shall find him. And if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul, then when you are in tribulation and all these things are come upon you, even in the latter days, if you turn to the Lord your God and shall be obedient unto his voice, 
You shall therefore keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you this day, that it may go well with you and with your children after you, and that you may prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God gives thee forever. And then consider this in Deuteronomy chapter 30. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you shall call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord thy God has driven you, and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you this day, you and your children, with all your heart and with all your soul. That when the Lord thy God turns your captivity and has compassion upon you and will return and gather you from all the nations where the Lord thy God has scattered you. There is a huge movement growing among the people of the world to once again hear the words given by God to Moses and to return to those ways. To begin to obey the commandments, statutes, and judgments. To keep the feast that God says are His and throw off the feast of Rome. They are realizing that our Messiah, when He was on this earth, He spoke the words of Moses and taught his followers to keep the commandments of God and throw off the traditions and doctrines of man. So the number one scriptural proof that we are living in the last days is the simple fact that people are coming back to the commandments of God to be obedient to the fullness of his Torah. For more videos and studies, please visit us online at newtutorah.com.